Hey, I'm live, it says. Cool. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Um, hope the sound's good. Let me know. Um, because I've changed a few settings and well, it's always a bit of a surprise how well that works. Uh, also hope that my fan in the background doesn't make too much noise. Um, and I forgot to fill up my glass, which I am going to need plenty of because it is hot in Sydney. It's, uh, it is what it is. So, welcome back, everybody. Um, yeah, we're going to be uh, having some fun tonight. Um, I got this idea to try and build a uh, little drum thing in VR. Um, as in, as I said in my uh, description, I know uh, absolutely nothing about music, <laughs> let alone playing the drums. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see how good that goes. Um, but I'm sure we should have some fun. Um, I've also hooked up my uh, my trusty index again. Um, haven't used that in a few uh, days, so hopefully that doesn't give me any problems tonight. We'll see. Uh, before we get started, there's a few things I wanted to run through. One is that uh, GodotCon just finished. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but that's the downside of living on the other side of the world. However, um, a lot of the uh, the tracks were uh, were actually uh, recorded um, and placed on the Gido Engine YouTube channel. So uh, uh, for anybody else who wasn't able to attend, um, go and check that out. It's it's really really cool. The other bit of news, and this is something that we are still um, sort of working on, um, but which is pretty much coming along. Excuse me, it's an itch. Um, is um, Malcolm and I, on behalf of the uh, Godot XR community, are organizing a game jam. Um, we're uh, we're keeping it small for the first one, just to uh, to just have some fun. So um, it's on the first uh, weekend of December. Um, time zones will probably throw this into one day earlier for the rest of the world, but um, we'll be pretty flexible with the time. Is uh, I think. Um, but the, the plan is to, to dedicate a whole weekend to do a game jam specifically targeting Godot XR. So anybody who wants to uh, wants to have a go, uh, a go at uh, making something in Godot using a VR headset or you know doing something in AR, this is a nice little chance to just uh, have some fun and uh, and do uh, something. So uh, um, yeah, there's some information with the uh, um, the game jam itself. We're hosting through itch.io, so it's all going to be online. Um, we will be posting more information about this as the month goes on, and both me and Malcolm are planning to post more content on our YouTube uh, to help people get started. So the idea um, is to polish up the uh, uh, the Godot XR templates that we have. Well, it's actually pretty polished up by now. Um, which gives you a starting template. We want to do something similar for the Tilt 5, for anybody who wants to do something with the Tilt 5, to uh, to just uh, um, you know get up and running really quickly. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this. So uh, yeah, check out the HIO uh, page and um, join the jam if you're interested in having some fun. Um, so yeah, that's really the two things that uh, that I have to mention um, before we get started. So um, getting into what uh, it is that uh, that I want to do tonight, I'm actually going to flip those two tabs around. Um, one is just to let everybody know that there is actually a rhythm game already made with Godot uh, based on Friday Night Funking. Uh, so this is Benny K. Uh, already a couple of years ago, uh, did a big port of Friday Night Funking uh, to Godot. Um, that is now both a VR and a normal port of the game. Um, and that's been well received in the Friday Night Funking mod scene. So that's uh, definitely worth to uh, checking out. Um, and yeah, just to, uh, to show a little Day bit two, one, of the VR version of it, the sound is not too loud. Um, it is, uh, it's a really, really cool <laughs> Little 
game. So I just wanted to let everybody know that, you know, that is already out there. I think that other people have been playing around with rhythm games in, uh, uh, in Godot in VR. Um, there's also plenty of other um, rhythm um, games made in Godot itself. Um, actually, come to think of this, there was one other person who was working on um, a, another VR game where you're actually on stage looking over, um, uh, looking over a crowd. That one was pretty cool, but I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but on the non-VR side, there are quite a few rhythm little games out there. And um, I actually forgot to copy the link, so I might actually quickly do that. Um, just to give credit where credit's due, but one of the ones... Hello and welcome back to the channel, today and today's topic is something uh, I'm pretty passionate about, which is rhythm games. games. I've made four so far, and I intend on making more, and let me share what I've learned so far. Uh, we're going down a bit of a different um, approach than he does, because first of all, we're not, being used, we're not using the keys, we're actually hitting things with VR. Uh, but also, I actually want to get a working um, drum set. Um, that you can actually just freely drum on um, and then add the rhythm game parts to it. And again, I've never done anything like this, so it's gonna be interesting figuring that out. Um, for that, I've also got this little link here. This is a beautiful little help page on the official Godot documentation, specifically around um, audio and syncing audio and um, looking at the fact that when you play audio, there is a little delay before the audio plays and um, you know how you really can get some information out of the game engine to figure out exactly where you are in the audio, keeping in mind that delay for playing and keeping in, uh, in mind the audio latency so that you, know, you can time things as, as best as possible. Um, not sure if we're going to get that far tonight, we will see, but the idea that I have is to start first with making a virtual drum work and then start looking at um, how I can add a track to that uh, where you get instructions of when to hit things um, so that we get our basically our scoring mechanism and then we'll see if we can actually get some music in it and then we obviously need to do some timing adjustments. But uh, yeah, let's let's hope that's a good idea. I am not quite sure. Uh, the last thing that I just have as a reference, um, just a quick Google search, um, just to you know get a reference of what a standard drum is made of, and which bits we need to uh, um, we need to reproduce. Now, the nice thing about drums is that these are components, so. There is no set drum. It depends on what you want to play, whether you want to actually add more different drums to this, including things like cowbells and triangles and all those sort of things. Um, so we'll eventually look at making our system um, generic enough that we can easily swap out individual instruments and you know add a couple of more drums or you know add other types of sounds to it and we'll we'll see how uh, how it goes now again uh, like i said in the beginning and like i'll probably be repeating quite a lot during this whole process is i've not i have no idea about drums uh, i'm just doing this just for fun and just as an experiment and seeing how far i get um so we'll see how how that develops um and whether we're going to do things about changing how things sound depending on how hard you strike things or what you strike things. Now, the other thing, which is really an interesting thing that I have not yet decided on how I'm going to handle it is our, um, our kick drum, our bass drum. And that is because that drum is the only one that you're not drumming on with your uh, drumsticks or whatever the proper name of those things are. Um, you are actually playing that with a pedal and of course, we don't have a controller on our foot. We don't have something on our foot. So one thing that we could do is to link that up to the triggers of the controllers. Um, or what I'm thinking about is that the bass drum is the only one that is controlled by the computer and the computer just plays that as part of, you know, the fact that you'll have other instruments playing, being played by the computer as well. Um, 
And one of the reasons that I'm thinking about leaving that out, even though when I look at um, other games like this, um, who, you know, indeed either do the trigger or they just have the drum that's some, uh, the, the, the bass drum is something that you hit with, uh, um, with your controller. I really want to get to a situation that this game purely works on um, hand positions. So I want to leave out any button inputs on the controller so that eventually we will also be able to play this on a quest with pure hand tracking and just move our hands around. And then obviously um, the hand tracking will still put a drumstick in the hand, a virtual drumstick, but it will just be placed based on our hand tracking instead of controller tracking. So that's the uh, that's the goal where we want to end up in. All right. I already started with my base project. All that's in here right now is a main scene with the start VR script. So this is a script that I got. And actually, I should have put that on as well. But when we go to Godot demo projects, there is currently a pull request of mine. Um, is this one? the OpenXR movement demos. Um, these are sort of smaller demos that I'm putting together that are linked to the um, tutorials that are on the website. Um, and I simply stole the uh, the start VR out of that, which is this little guy here. Um, might have add one or two things to it because I got it from one of my other projects that I work on. But basically, that's where you can find that one. And it's loosely based on the start VR that's in XR Tools. Um, for this project, because it is a sitting down project um, where we're purely using a controller tracking and nothing else, um, using XR Tools is really overkill for this project. And that's actually also one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is because I wanted to do um, a project on stream as a sitting down project. Um, so far, our kind of focus has always been on standing up projects where you can walk around. Um, but there are a lot of scenarios where you want to do a seated um, system. And I feel that XR Tools is overkill in that scenario. So the Start VR uh, project, all that does is uh, when our game starts, it's set up Open XR. Um, set some configuration. Um, it makes sure that the refresh rate is adjusted as soon as the session begins. And it does some um, basic communication with OpenXR and our project so that eventually we can hook up, well, it never worked the first time, uh, we can hook up some of these signals and especially the pose we centered. Although the focus gain and focus loss, I think in a rhythm game are very important too, because the moment that the player takes off their headset, we get the uh, the focus sorry, the focus lost signal. We obviously want to stop playing. We want to pause the game. Okay. Now the other thing that's important is I'm running four point two, um, but a custom build here. And did I close that one or did I leave that open? I of course closed that one. So let's go and find that little guy. Um, I am using a custom build that has this little PR built in, which is the PR that I've been working on uh, for the past week or two, um, which adds MSAA support and scaling support to the uh, compatibility render. And I want to use that because, um, well, first of all, I just want to test things in a, in a real environment, but also I want to see how well MSAA really looks in, a, in an actual game. Um, and especially on the quest, because one of the things that has, what, which is special about this, um, and this is where I hope other people will test this out as well, as soon as it out is the little thing that I'm describing over here, is that I use the multi-sample extensions um, if they are available. Now these are open GLES extensions, so they are only available on mobile phones and on devices like the quest. But um, they perform a version of MSAA where instead of first rendering to an MSAA texture, which then gets resolved to the actual output, um, we're actually rendering um, in our tile architecture every tile on an MSAA tile, but then it's immediately resolved and written out to the, the texture, which means that there is a lot less overhead and a lot less bandwidth waste 
um, on that. So this is actually a very, very cheap way to do MSAA on mobile GPUs. Um, and so far our testing showed that there is very little performance drawback on adding MSAA or enabling MSAA on something like a Quest. Um, so yeah, so far using those extensions um, works really, really well. And obviously we're working on desktop right now and on desktop, we're still using the old fashioned MSAA approach where we render to an MSAA buffer and then resolve and uh, away we go. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty stuff with, uh, or pretty ha chuffed, that's the word, pretty happy with, uh, with that, um, that approach. And we'll, uh, we'll play around with that uh, during this project. Okay, so in order to actually set that up, we do need to go into project settings and we'll quickly go through a few things. Uh, the first thing is looking at opening. So I've already enabled it so that we don't have to restart it, but I'm going to enable another option, which is the Voviation options. And this actually comes in two. The first is a level off means that this system is off, but we're gonna put that on high. And what this means is that we are going to use a system um, that results in the um, where your eye focus is, that that will is, is rendered on normal resolution. But the further out you go, the less detail we render at, which saves a lot of performance because your eye won't actually see that because the lens distortion will compress that information anyway. Um, the second thing that we're going to turn on is dynamic. And what dynamic does is it will throttle between low and high or low and whatever option you selected here um, to get the optimum foveation le uh, level that the device can handle without dropping frames. So high obviously uh, means that, uh, if I'm correct, yeah, high I think is the one where... Um, I have to remember which way around it is. I think high is the one where we um, constrain the resolution the most, so it's the fastest. I think low is just a little bit of foveation, so which is um, much slower but more detailed. But it could be I could be flipping those the wrong way around. Um, anyway, with high and foveation dynamic on the quest, will automatically find the most optimal one. And so far. Um, it looks very sharp. So I am pretty happy with, uh, with putting it on those settings. Uh, we're not going to worry about any of these. Um, I'm gonna leave hand tracking off uh, at the moment. Uh, that one is on by default just because we had that um, available before, but I'm going to turn it off because we're purely going to start with controller tracking. I might turn that back on eventually once we start playing around with the new hand interaction profile. But for now, that one remains off. Okay, this is obviously also enabled, else things don't work. Um, then in rendering, obviously double checking, everything is running on cloud compatibility, which is what we want. But our other options unfortunately aren't available until we turn advanced settings on. And let's go to anti-aliasing and on MSA 3D we're gonna to go to four times. And we're just gonna see how well that works and uh, you know, what sort of quality we get out of that. Cool. All right, with that all set up, um, we need to start configuring our main scene. Um, for now, this game, I'm just going to dump everything into a single scene. We're just gonna go straight into the environment where we start playing. Potentially later on, we will make that nicer, um, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple for now. So we're gonna start with adding our XR origin point here. And I'm going to go and add a camera to that. And I'm going to go and put a controller to that. And I'm gonna duplicate that so that we can rename that left hand and put that to the left hand tracker. And we're gonna leave the poses alone for now. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. And here, right hand, we're gonna put that on right hand and there we go. So that should make sure that we can see things. Um, as always, 
Do I do that? No, I'm actually going to leave that alone for now. Okay. So, because remember, we're going to do a seated experience, and we're by default getting. Um, um, we're going to get. Um, what's the word? <laughs> Can't think of the term. Um, room scale tracking. Now, that's actually another thing that I wanted to quickly check. Did I add that in here? Um, where are we? Okay, bar. I only have the local. I was thinking about playing around with local stage, but I think local stage means that we don't get tracking at all. So I might just use our own built in solutions for this and uh, and deal with that. So, okay. Excuse me, my, uh, my throat is being a bit difficult. I'm still not completely recovered from my cold or flu or whatever it is that's been, um, Plaguing me for quite a while now. Okay, so for now we are going to go and add our sun and our environment into here just so that we have a background and light as part of our scene. But I'm not sure if we're actually going to end up using that. Um, I just want that in there just in case. All right. Um, this should run now but i'm not seeing anything yet so let's actually do a few more things the first is just adding a mesh instance to our hand and we're just going to go up that test and i'm going to make that a box and we're going to make that much smaller um eventually we'll change that to our drumstick let's go and oops uh let's go and duplicate that put that over here s2 just so that once we start uh, moving around, we can see our hands moving around. And just for, for a test, put in a, a big box and we put that in front of us somewhere, just like that, just so that we have something that we can see. And the last thing that I wanna do, stop pulling up there, is I wanna set up our own action map. And what I'm going to be doing, except for the simple controller, I am going to delete everything from our action map. Boom. And in our action sets, um, I'm gonna delete most of these things as well. Oops. Excuse me. Um, I'm just gonna call that our hand pose. And actually I do want pose in there just for consistency. And I want to leave our haptic in there because we're going to do some haptic feedback when we um, hit the drums. So I'm gutting the whole action set so that we have something simple. Now in this case, our hand pose is on our aim. I actually don't want that on our aim. I want that on our, I actually want it on the palm. So I'm going to assume that we have a palm pose. And that is a bit dangerous because not all controllers support the palm, uh, palm pose. But I'm pretty sure that the index and the quest both support the palm pose. Um, um, scroll up. Uh, the palm pose extension. And the difference between grip and palm pose is that when you look at a controller, the grip um, pose is placed on the grip. And it's oriented in the in the grip way, which tends to be a little bit um, differently interpreted between different XR runtimes. So, with the index, the grip is pretty much level with my palm, but um, or at least when I'm holding it naturally. I don't have my index controller handy at the moment, or not, not within reach anyway. Um, but with a Quest, you're holding, your natural way of holding the, um, the controller is slightly different. Um, in the old days, there was, a, oh, hi, yes, it's Alex, how are you going? Um, in the old days, there was like a 45 degree difference in grip pose between the index and the Quest controller, depending on which runtime you were on. It was annoying. 
Um, the palm pose, however, is much better defined. The palm pose is a pose exactly in the middle of your palm. And I hope you guys can see this because I don't actually see my camera very well at the moment. Um, but it's in the middle of, and maybe like this, uh, in the middle of your palm, and it's nicely aligned with your hand. If you would have an open hand, that would be the Z direction, that would be the Y direction, and that would be the X direction. So that pose is much more stable and perfect for us to then make sure that our um, our drumsticks are actually in our hand the way that we expect them to be and not suddenly at a 45 degree angle. So yeah, that's why we are using that. Um, however, the palm pose is not supported by all XR runtimes. So officially we should have a backup um, in case it's not supported. But yeah, for now, let's just assume that it's uh, that it is what else we're gonna back going back to the grip pose and hope uh, hope for the best. <laughs> so that's all that we're going to do with our action set. We're gonna save it. So now we have a simplified action set, um, and one that is using the simple controller. And because we have things set in the simple controller, all the different XR runtime should support this. Okay, um, so with that, we're gonna go back to our hands and instead of doing the default, we now need to actually type it in and say hand pose. Boom. And then for our right hand, we do the same. We replace default by hand pose. So now it should be using that action to track our hand. Sweet. Okay. Let's go and see if this will run and if we have everything set up. Now, I also hope that this is not going to screw around with my capture card because I did have problems with that in the past. So let us see how well that goes. Oh, I can just use current. Ignore those warnings, by the way, that is already fixed, but that is a problem in the current beta. Um, you need to be on, thank you. I want you on. And have I got? Yes, I do. But my box is oh on my right. Okay, so annoying but true. I can see my two hands. Hello, hello, hello. But the box is to my right. So uh, yeah, but that's okay. That is one of the things that we actually want to have changed. Um. And with that, I actually need to think about what is that in my index? I don't know. So yeah, again, ignore those warnings that are in there. That's that's a, a change in the way that meshes are currently handled. And unfortunately, there is a, a, a small box in there. It's in those boxes, yeah. Okay. So. Um, that's actually very distracting. <laughs> Go away. Um, what do we do next? So we've got that. We the problem is that our default position is to the right, and the thing that I wanted to look at. Let's go move that up to the top there. Is we have this pose recentered that we get, but I wonder if that is a quest only feature. So that might be the only thing that we do want to add into our action set um, as a uh, alternative option. And that will be um, pose in center. We go and that should be a boolean and well actually before i add that in i'm going to leave that unbound i just want to double check whether we are not getting this um so let me just put a print in here i would say test and let's just see if we're going to get that so here we go we've got our headset we've got our first controller controller <laughs> um, I'm just gonna hold this okay 
that brings up the menu. So let's not do that. Let's try it on our other controller. Okay, let's go and track you out. I don't think it does the same thing. Yeah, it does the same thing. Hmm. So we don't have a recenter button on this. Hmm. Oops. Okay. So that is a questioning then. Because on the quest, when you uh, when you press the uh, um, or you hold the menu button, you actually get a recenter. Which is kind of nice. So we're gonna have to react on our own. The problem then is on which one do I want to do this? And even how is this mapped on the uh, on the index? Index controller. Um, valves, no, not valve, open XR, um, simple. Let's see if there's anything that tells us about this. All right, you know, I'm not going to waste more time on that than I need to. I'm just going to make an exception for the index controller. And we're going to go just do the same thing here. Hand pose. Hand pose. We are going to go down here and do haptic. And then haptic. And then let's just say that um, I just do. They both called A. They both called A. Um, let's just take it onto the A button. Apparently. So we just have a recenter on the A. Okay. I guess that means that we now need a script on our hand. So let's go and create a script here. Um, let's go and create a folder for our player. And we're just going to call this our hand script. We're not going to make a different one for left and right. We want something that works on both. So we're going to do this as well. Load player hand. There we go. Um, and we're going to go and say button pressed. Right. Oh, connecting from. No, it's connecting to. That is allowed. Um, if name is, um, no, no, it's not going to work, is it? <laughs> it doesn't know how to, um, uh, autocomplete that yet. And I think that this name is probably double. So this is going to become action name. Yeah. If action name is pose recenter, um, then actually we're going to go and admit the signal here. Center. How do I call that here? That post re oh, center. Okay. Emit action. Oh, emit signal. Where are you? I just added you. Oh, there we go. So that should be, uh, be it for the right hand. And obviously the left hand needs to be the same and that's now connected onto the same method, but it's going to do that. Which now means that we have a pose recentered there. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we could have hidden the internal things because that's only the internal handling of this. Uh, but we want a main script here. Or can I call that, I can probably hook that up straight to this, can't I? Um, no, because I want to do all of that, that's right. So we are actually going to do a pose recentered on our main script. Um, or do we want that, or do we want to create this as a player script? That's maybe even nicer. Let's do that. So this is going to become a player. And let's see what happens if we do this. Player uh, three, player. So that becomes our main player script. We might use our main script after all in the end, but for now, there's that. That still goes to there. And over here, we want to create a 
I'll just leave those for now. Punk pose recentered. So that's the one that we're going to have to implement. Now we're going to go and hook that one. That's all. Um, uh, yeah, we can do that straight away because I haven't put any parameters on there. There we go. Same thing here. We're going to keep it like that. There we go. Is that now to save? Oh, it only says we'll do that. Okay. Um, but now on our start VR, we also have a pose recentered. And we can now go and also connect that to the pose we sent it on our player. So whether we get it from um, an open XR because we're on Quest or on Index because we press the A button, we are going to be getting our pose recentered call here. And this is basically to let us know that the player has pressed the A button on the controllers or has pressed the recenter button on the Quest controllers. And now we need to do that. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to call on XR server the function center on HMD. And what we want to do here is we want to reset our, uh, sorry, there's two parameters here. The first one is whether we reset our angle the way that we're looking. So we want to reset that so that we're, uh, once it's done, we are now looking forward as far as Godot is concerned. But we want to keep our up and down. So if I'm looking up when I'm recentering, I want to keep looking the direction that I'm, um, you know, the tilt at which I'm looking. Now, the second parameter here is whether we want to keep the height. So if we set this to true, that means that our uh, the height of our camera is going to stay as is. But if we set this to false, that means that we now drop down to, um, to zero. So after this is called, it's obviously working over here, our XR camera at that point in time will basically be placed on the XR origin point, just keeping the tilt, whether I'm looking up or down. After that, it starts fully tracking again. So if I move around, I will move around the XR origin. But when I'm not sitting down, the moment that center on HMD runs, I am, um, I'm going to be in that spot. Oops. And that's going to be very important because we are we can now place our player as if our player is sitting down on the seat in front of the drums. So we can nicely place the drums in front of our player, and uh, and he's going to be happy. So we can demonstrate that by running play. And uh, of course, my controller shut down again. Yeah, there's no tracking at the moment. Why are you no longer tracking? Hello, there we go, now we're tracking. So our box is still on the right over there. I'm looking forward. Actually, I look a bit like this, just for fun. And now I'm pressing the A button and nothing happens. <laughs> okay, why is nothing happening? Obviously our code isn't being called. So we are missing something. Now the most logical thing that is missing is that I forgot to press save on there. Let's, uh, let's rule that out first, because I always forget to press save. All right. Yeah, there's my thing, press A. And now you can see our um, box is straight in front of us. Uh, we're also seeing the box for our other controller. I still need to make sure that we have something on the script that if our controllers aren't. <laughs> okay, that's what happens when you lose tracking. Um, my uh, my controllers, I'm just putting them down here. I don't know if you guys can see where I'm putting them down, but uh, that is out of sight of both my um, lighthouses. So that's why it keeps disappearing. Plus they need to be updated. And for some reason, they don't want to update. Really annoying. Okay. So now one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our um, player gets a... Um, signal that they he should you know recenter it so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to check how far away from the origin point our uh, player is and if our player is too far away from that origin point we're going to black out the screen um i'm going to make my life easy i'm going to go over here um, and I'm going to go over 
here and over here and over here. And I think I can go and just copy that whole folder over. Boom, 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 boom. That's just, by the way, a little test project that I'm working on. So with that, I should be able to add this blackout project. This is another thing that is actually coming. Did I add that to those projects? Yeah, I think it's in, in those demos that, uh, that I did. So why does that not want to, oh, well, what am I missing? I'm missing my shader. Haha, I didn't copy everything. Um, so that means that we're going to go and create a folder shaders. And I'm going to call that NISC. And that means that here we should have a shaders folder and a NISC folder. Let's go and copy out our yeah. So can we now add this in? Yes, we can. Okay. So our blackout scene is a very simple scene, just a node with a script. And all the script does is it exports a variable called fade. It goes from zero to one. Zero means that it's completely transparent and hidden. You can see that here it finds our mesh instance. And once it's totally to one, or you know, if it's anything bigger than zero, then it uh, it shows our mesh instance, and it actually sets that fade as a uh, a property to, uh, to the shader, where it basically sets a uh, a color completely black, but you can change the color if you want, and then the fade becomes the alpha, so it fades from zero to one. Now the shader that we have over here. Um, First of all, it has a render priority of minus 99, um, which means that I'm going to need minus 100 for something else. I just want to make sure that it's uh, rendered last. Is it last? Yeah, I think it's it renders last. Um, and all that it does is just color the whole screen with that thing. And it does that by, uh, this is just a normal quad, if I'm correct. Yeah, so it's a quad one by one. Um, which I'm positioning over the whole uh, screen. So I'm ignoring which I am rendering on, I'm ignoring my projection matrix, I'm ignoring everything else. I'm simply saying just boom, full screen rectangle. And we can even demo that in our view here that when I make that black, you can see that we go between black and Right. Now, some of the UI does survive because that's drawn after our main scene is drawn. Um, and I believe that for all of that, I believe that we might actually be rendering this first instead of last. And I think the whole idea is to, to render this. Do I? I'm not sure, actually. I am not sure, but it blacks out the screen. <laughs> we'll see in a minute whether whether I've forgotten something about that. But um, it should black out the whole screen. Oh, disabled, so it doesn't draw anything. It's unshaded. Depth that's disabled, so it's going to draw regardless of what there is. And because of an alpha, it should be transparent. Yeah, so it should just be the last thing that's drawn. So anyway, that's our blackout. We're going to make use of that. And what we're going to be doing here is in our process, we are simply going to go and get a distance. Um, and that is going to become our dark camera. Um, position because we want it in relation to our origin point. We don't want it in the global space. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a vector three. Vector three has length, doesn't it? Length. So beautiful auto completion. Why can't I just type in length here? No length. Okay. So with that, we can see how far away we are from our camera. Um, let's go and set up a export var for our max distance. 
Um, and let's say that we're going to put that on five meters. So what we're going to do here is if distance bigger than max distance else. All right. Um, something that I could do here. Uh, uh, never mind. I'm going to figure it out someday. Uh, okay, so we're just going to say XR camera blackout um, fade, I believe that's called. Our, let's see that over here. So we're going to make sure that it's zero if we are at there. And in this case, we are going to say um, distance minus max distance. Um, so that means that we get out, if we're on there, we're zero, and then we go further and further and further, but we want to um, make that fade out a little quicker. So let's say that we give it about, uh, uh, yeah, about five centimeters. So we can just divide it by that. And then we should be able to use a clamp function to make sure we leave that between zero and one. And that should fade out our screen. Now, because we starting standing up, that should fade out our screen right away until we recenter. Okay, so it is not liking our length. Probably because I misspelled that. Thank you very much. All right, and then you need to see that our view is beautifully black. Oh my god, I can't see a thing. All right, until I recenter. Okay, that should unfade it. That's interesting. It doesn't do that. Okay. Um, one thing that I want to do before we start casing um, because that could have been something else. Ah, oh. could be because my controller is not on. But let's log it when we get it so that we uh, know. So this controller keeps shutting down for some reason. Okay, so black still. Controller back on. Give it a moment to track. I did try and charge this, so it shouldn't be because we're not tracking. Charging. So now we can see that the moment that I pressed A, we're getting there. But it should be so. Maybe you can go the other way. No. Did I make it too far away? Yeah. So that uh, that 10 centimeters is too much. You can see that as I move too far away, our screen becomes. That is exactly what we want. By the way, our uh, our box is probably black because there is a bug in uh, in here as well. Let's go and work around that for now. I still need to look at this one, but our sky contribution isn't always working. So I'm gonna put a bit of ambient light up, and I'm gonna bring our sky contribution there because our light is currently shining from the other side. We probably need to turn that around, but I'm gonna make sure first whether I'm correct that that is my reason that, uh, that we were seeing our box of black. Anyway, um, so yeah, that is all working. Let's go and make that a, um, an export of where as well. Fade distance, but we're gonna actually make that a bit smaller. So only five centimeters. No, that was actually five centimeters, so that's just not enough. Let's make it two centimeters, see if that is good enough. That felt more than five, but maybe I'm mistaken about something. All right, now the last thing that we want to do, and we're going to do that here as well, we're going to add a label 3D in here and uh, bring it to center. Obviously, um, it won't be A on other things, but for now, that is good enough. This is going to become press A to center. Boom, that's gonna go a little bit over here. There we go. All right, cool. 
So now the problem becomes, can I, can I do anything here about the, maybe it's here, okay. We do not want that to be shaded. That's fine. We don't want to do a depth test. And our render priority needs to be minus 100 because we want to render it fast. But why? Why the heck does that make it black? That makes no sense to me. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my blackout scene and I'm gonna go to my material here and I'm gonna actually make that minus 10. So that now I can make this minus 11. It's still making it all black, which is really annoying. Why are you not? Well, we do see that it's indeed nicely rendering last, which is what we want. But I don't know why it's becoming black. Hmm. See, is it's only that is why. Because because my outline rendering. <laughs> okay, that that was that that was the problem. Yeah, that was that was the problem. Um, of course, if I uh, change one, I need to change the other. So that's, that's a little interesting. Why wouldn't that just be in relation to that? If I change that, you would automatically you know, imagine that those two actually become um, added together. Anyway, uh, what we now obviously want to do is here, XR camera is visible, is true. And here, we're gonna make that false. And that should mean, hopefully, no, it does not like that. That's interesting. So, because that should now mean that that is the report. So what else do we need? We have our depth test turned off, so it always is drawn. Actually, let's go and have a look at this and see if we... Uh, no. um, did I get the render priority wrong? Actually, I think I, uh, oh, okay. I think I've got my render priority the wrong way around. So let's make that 99. And now that gets rendered fast. So higher the render priority, interesting oh because now okay this does not make any sense Yeah, um, that does not make sense to me. But hey, we uh, we got it to uh, to now render the way that I want it to render. So let's go and um, I'm not showing any of this while we are here. 
So now I have the press to center in the front of my um, for something that I've turned. This is really weird. So why does it change color when I am looking to hide? Ah, well, uh, whatever. Yeah, at least we can see the press A to center. That's the thing that I find most important. Let me guess, that's turned off again. That is turned off again. Okay, come on, green, there we go. And indeed, our box is no longer black. So we also know that indeed it is our light distortion issue. I'm still surprised by how far I need to move this before we get our Press A to render. So I'm definitely not thinking that through correctly yet. However, I don't care. <laughs> um, we're wasting too much time on just the setup stuff. However, this is a, an important part of the setup of this. So we have a seated experience. We have a situation where if we are too far away from our origin point, especially when we start, we have to press our recenter button. And there we go. Now, one thing that I do want to do is, um, and we're gonna do that on main here. Um, let's see. No, that's on the note. So we're going to get focus gains whenever the player actually puts the headset on. And obviously when the player puts the headset off, um, we get focus lost. So we can already put a unpause game uh, note here. That's something we still need to do. But the other thing that we can do here is obviously, hey, he's only just putting it on we can go and put a automatic recenter over here by calling player. I don't know why my autocomplete is so broken. There's something wrong with my, how is it called, pose? Still, it should find it. Um, we're gonna go and do that. So obviously we're gonna go and add that in later. Um, and let's also put our focus lost in there already. And we're gonna go and put a remark here that we need to pause our game here because player is no longer um, doing something. All right, so let's quickly see if that works. So we're getting our press A to center. And now when we put our headset on, Okay, that's interesting. So let's put it off. Okay, why? The second time I did it, okay. But I guess I got my gain focus way too quick. Uh, oh, I think I know what that is. Yep, because I'm I'm not getting the new positioning data yet. Maybe. No. I'm wondering if I should do this under a few frames delay. Um could do that. With the timer. Just want to rule out that that's the problem. Hit center timer. Um, so that's becoming a one shot. Let's wait for half a second. Um, and on timeout, uh, we're gonna go and call that one. So on player, we're gonna call calls, uh, call, pose, recenter. Boom, that gets called, perfect. 
Um, and that means that in here, instead of that, we are now saying recenter timer start. So instead of an immediate recenter, we give it a uh, little bit of time to actually get some tracking data. There we go. And now we see that that is working properly. And when we take it off again, we go. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll leave that uh, pause thing for another day as well. So we have our setup done now. Let's go and actually make something fun happen, shall we? Um, so the first thing that I want to do, now that we have confirmed that our lighting is uh, the bug that I was thinking about around um, sky contribution, which is something that I plan to look into eventually. Uh, but for now, we will, oops, I didn't, there we go. I want to rotate you, there we go. I just want to make sure the light comes from the right direction. Now, obviously, um, this is just a temporary, theme for us to put things in certain places. Um, at this point in time, we can also move our player up. So let's say that we're sitting about one meter high. I think that's probably a good seating position. We will see. Um, yeah. Um, what was I? <laughs> Sometimes I lose my train of thought. Um, especially because it's late. So yeah. Um, yeah, eventually we're going to go and change the whole environment that we're sitting in. Um, maybe make a stage. Maybe we make something, you know, sci-fi, whatever. Don't know yet. Uh, for now, we're just going to start creating a very simple drum system around the player. So... First thing that we need to do is actually change these um, crazy little blocks that we have into actual drumsticks. So for that, um, we are probably going to want to actually save this as a hand scene. I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to go and delete my right hand. It's going to come back, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to rename you to hand for now. I'm going to go and save this branch as a scene on the player, and we're going to call that hand scene. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, so we have our hand script there as well. So now we can go and duplicate this guy. No, duplicate this guy. That's going to be right hand. That's going to be left hand. Okay. Now we've lost our pose recentered because we redid this. Um, forgot what that's called. Let's just go pose recentered. Try it again. Um, and this we go there. Um, we do the same thing here. Not there. Um, so that's our left hand on our hand pose. This is going to become our right hand on our and pose perfect so yeah sometimes when you do that with duplicating nodes and stuff like that we lose some information which is annoying but it is what it is but now we nicely have a scene for p10 now that's going to give us a it needs to be you know a child of x or origin but we have a sub scene now so that's fine so the first thing that i want to do here is actually in process for that, I need to go up to the house for extra control, and I think we can grab our tracker here. Or do we need to do that? Um, that's probably on our base cards. Yeah. Okay, we have a get is active, and we have a get pose. Actually, do we have a helper here? Oh, yeah, that's cool. So I added that in as a helper function that does all the checks that I want to do. So what we're going to do here on our hand script in our process, we are simply going to say visible is get is what was that? Oh, 
get has tracking data. Okay, get has tracking data. So basically, this will return true if our tracker exists. So if we actually are holding a controller, and if we're actually getting tracked data, which means that when our uh, controllers are off, like they are right now, we won't see our stupid boxes. So I'm going to put this on. We see our big box that we created, but we don't see our hands. Now, once I turn this on, and I wait until it starts, there we go. Now it should be appearing, but it's not. How nice is that? So let's try that with the left hand, just in case we just screwed something up in the way that we created everything. Uh, yeah, so that one works. But my right hand, yeah, because you can't see him, can you? Yeah, no. I really need to reposition my light boxes so they make sense. Excuse me. Um, when we do, um, yeah, reposition my light boxes so they can actually see my table. <laughs> or, you know, the um, controllers can see their light boxes when, uh, or lighthouses when they're moving. All right. So we screwed something up with this. So this is right hands and it's returned back to default. Why did you turn back to default? You are not default. That is being very annoying. I'm not sure why you did that. Now we have left hand there, and okay, down here. That is the defaults that we have over here. Very good. There. Well, it seems to have remembered it this time. So let's see if this time it's happy enough. Come on. Yeah, you are tracking, but you still aren't. Recenter works, so we're we're getting it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I yeah, know you're gonna fly off. So I'm not quite sure why that is not working properly. What are we missing? And every process we check. Okay, so that was on the same script. Now well, let's still have those. Right, let me just move back a bit so that my lighthouses actually pick things up properly. Thank you. Right, so this one's tracking. It's not tracking well for some reason. Now it's tracking properly, but this one's still not tracking. Okay, let's go and figure out here. Yeah. Send them both. left still not getting my right hand and i'm really having difficulty with the tracking oh. well okay i now see my right hand box here but it's not tracking what is it? yeah because i'm inside of it so maybe it's just not wanting to do what it's supposed to do that's really weird why did that go bad Um, okay, let's first rule out that it's not some mistake that we made in here. No, that's all good. Because one of the other things that I'm worried about is that one of my lighthouses isn't being spotted. And I'm wondering if that's just because it's too far away or if it's broken. Also, which one is it that is actually doing? How do I know which one that is? Hmm. 
picking up one. Alright, that one's flicking arrows at me now. Because that's of course my other problem is that if my uh, my lighthouses are tracking very well, then uh, that's not going to be fun today. Yeah, they're both going green again, but is that now because this guy is not visible? Oh yeah, now now both of them see me. Okay, that's good. Okay, so. I'm just gonna need to be aware that my where my lighthouse has. I I really need to put my second lighthouse much closer to my desk, because that's all the way on the other side of the room, and I think that's why I'm having tracking issues. Anyway, um, that doesn't explain why my right hand stopped working properly, because it's gone back to defaults. I have a feeling that that is because I duplicated the node and it just screwed up things in the background. So. Let's go and re-add it. Actually, I'm going to go and save that first. I want to reload this. Um, clear. Now we're going to go and add hand scene again. Call that right hand. And we're going to put it on that. And then again, that goes back to default. Why? Why, 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 why are you being so annoying to me? Okay. I'll go back to default. That is, um, that is a bug, guys. Ooh. Thanks, Budgie. I'm glad you enjoyed that one. That was a, that was a fun stream to do with the whole render effect thing. So, um, this, however, is getting me very surprised. Um, well, one thing that we can obviously do to work around that problem is that in our ready function, we are simply going to go and override our pose. We're simply going to say pose is and pose. There you go. I have no idea why it kept, keeps resetting that, but I'm guessing that that is our problem. Let's see if we are correct at that and that it now has fixed itself. Okay, the cable got all stuck. Okay, exit. Nope. Come on, you can do it. It says it's tracking well controllers. I don't know. All right, so that is definitely working now. Put my A button. <laughs> what the heck is going on here, guys? Okay, so it's only half working. Um, I am f feeling that there is much more getting broken by doing this. Oh, because we just added that. Ah, no, that, that's my own fault, guys. That is completely my own fault. I removed that node and that, of course, broke this. So that should do that again. We have both hands tracking again. Um, and that should now mean that we should be able to say that. And oh, that's one. That's two, they're both tracking. Okay. Well, definitely having problems with my accuracy of my lighthouses. Okay. So If you ask me when I look at this, my palm poses have the same issue as my grip poses. They're 45 degree because I'm holding my hands forward now and they are turned 45 degrees. Okay. 
Let's see what happens. I think it's because of that vent in here that they they do something weird. I don't know. Okay. Um, on my index controller, I'm actually going to go and change my hand pose onto the grip. And I just want to see. Actually, let's go and change our um, our box here. I'll go over here, and we're actually going to go and change this to something shaped very differently. Um, let's do it like this. Actually, let's uh, let's make that a cylinder. I think that makes much more sense. And then our radius should be zero one. Our radius should be zero one. And our height can be zero one. There we go. All right. Um, I actually okay. How long is a drumstick? Let's find that out. Uh, size of drumstick. Uh, why did I put everything in in inches? I'm I use a metric system, guys. Um, most drumsticks used on the drum set are about 16 inches long. Okay, so let's say 16 inches. I think it's times 2.5, isn't it? So 40 centimeters. Let's just make it 40 centimeters. So that's 0.4. And that means that we also want to move that up a bit. Um, can you go away? Thank you. Um, so... Maybe a little bit more than that. Let's do it like that. Um, eventually, we'll we'll replace that with a nice model, but for now, that will do. So let's see if that feels good in the hands. Okay, so that's still forty five degrees uh, rotated, and it's going backwards now. So. I don't know. Hmm. Um, looking at that, it is actually. I don't know if that really shows on. But when you when you have the controller, you can see that it is actually slightly bent towards my hand. So I'm actually going to put it back on the palm and see what that feels like. Or is it that I didn't hit save again? It might just be that I didn't hit save again. So let's double check that. Is that good enough for me? Ta -da. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Kinda. Yes, we kinda know. That was too weird, the way that that is. So it's basically saying that up, it's a shilling like this, and it's now being that is up. So, okay, we can live with that, which means that we should be able to go and say, let's move that 90 degrees. Uh, the problem is that that now no longer that needs to be here, but that should be oh. no, not that way. That way, and I think that probably needs to go that way. All right, let's see if I'm right with that. And I bet you that this only then looks correct on an index, and then when I use this on my quest, that it all looks wrong. Okay, so yeah. Hmm. Yep, go on. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe it's something that we're going to make user controllable that you can shift them a little bit. But we can hit something else. So, time to create something we can hit. All righty. You good, Blakey? Yeah. Chilling, being bored. Wow. Well, it's bedtime, so.
<laughs> okay. Now we need to figure out what are we going to do physics wise. Um, because obviously we want to be able to hit the drum. Now the easiest way would be to um, to use areas and just detect that we're on the drum and not really bother with physics at all. And we just see whether we're in or going in or out of the drum. But a cooler way is to actually properly use physics and stop the drumstick when we hit something. So let's first create something that we can hit. Um, and for that, I am going to create first a empty scene with all our logic, and then we're going to in inherit that scene for every type of instrument that we can hit. So, We need something that we can hit and that the text hits, but that doesn't move. And what I'm not sure about is if I add a static body, does a static body, no, that doesn't get any collision information, but we can turn that around. Because if we detect the hit with the stick, and then we detect what we hit, and we tell that thing, hey, I hit you, and that then does whatever it needs to do, we have a way to make things work. I think that's a great idea. Okie dokie. <clears throat> I think that's the way that we're gonna gonna make it work. So, um, let's call that instruments, and we're gonna go and save this. I'm gonna create a new folder for that. I'm gonna call that ins instruments. Go. Yeah. That's gonna be called instrument. And we're obviously going to go and create a script for that. And we'll do something with that eventually. Cool. Now, the other thing that we need to do here, actually, we're going to remove that now because we need to create our first inherited scene from that. Um, wait, before I do anything else, I'm going to rename this and remove capital cool so now we can go can i do that with this new inherited scene perfect okay so now it's time to have a look at what are we all going to do here so let's start with our tongues so we're going to go and create some objects for our tongues now what would be the size of a tundra and again, everything in inches, really. <laughs> um, so you also need a floor drum in, uh, tongue eventually, but we'll do a normal tongue first. Rookie dookie. That's great, Tom. And we're not going to obviously model the whole thing. Well, eventually, we'll import some nice objects and stuff like that. For now, we just need something for us to... Uh, to make this work with. Okay. So this one is gonna call be called Tundra. Save. Now with our Tundra, we're going to start with a mesh instance that just becomes the body of our drum. Um which is the, the black part of it. We're going to go add a little bit of thumb as well. Let's see how much. Um, 
or do we just eh, 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 eh. I think we're just gonna keep it simple for now and eventually we'll model something for it. Okay, so uh to, no ten inches is cm. Yeah. That would be about twenty-five. I should have known that. Minus two point five. So uh bum, 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 we're going to say um somewhere. Maybe twenty-five. Twenty-five. That's a bit short. That look about right for the drum. What is that? That looks a bit too high actually. There we go. We have a drum. Now, the second thing that we need to do here, oh, and that's something we're actually going to go do here first. We want a collision shape for the thing that we hit, and we're only going to make a collision shape for the top of a drum. But with that, I'm actually going to go and move this, um, this down eventually. So, okay, let's call that the drum mesh. There we go. This one is also going to be a cylinder shape. Boom. Um, the radius should still be 25, but here we're going to go and make that nice and small. I think that actually needs to be smaller than that. There we go. And now I actually want my drum to go down to there. Um, and if we go to transform, oh, that's gone nicely. There it is. Where are it? So we have a collision shape here on which we can hit our drum stick. Cool. Super happy with that. All right. Cool. With that in our main scene, actually gonna move that up a bit. There we go. In our main scene, we can now add in our top drum. There we go. And let's go and position that somewhere that is nice to hit. So we're just gonna move it in front of me. I have no idea if that is gonna be comfortable, but that's something that uh, we will move into place eventually. But we wanna be able to hit our drum there. Might even put it a little bit like this just to make our life easy. No idea if that's any good. Um, eventually we'll need to get some um, something that uh, uh, makes it stand on the ground. We can probably generate that or make that a tool script that creates a nice little stand for it or something. But for now we just have a circle for our drum. We're going to see if we can make you know make us hit that drum. Okie doke. Super. Um, so let's go back to our hands, to our drumstick. So now what we want to do is we want to have a collision shape that follows our drumstick around so that we know that we hit something. Now one easy way to do this is to make a character body 3D. Um, um, yes, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. And then I'm going to go and add our drumstick to it like that. Question is, do I want that to actually be in the middle? Yes, I do. So I need to make a... Um, Anchor for that. Here we go. And so with that, I now am going to go and set that on my anchor. Cool. That means that our drumstick is nicely centered. Is that smart? Or is that going to mean that I've got to 
when we hit it, we're going to feel like our, I don't know, we'll see. Um, we will see, we will see. All right. Obviously, on our character body, we also need a collision shape. Go, and that needs to be actually here. We're gonna make it a cat fit shape. Because we are gonna rotate 90 degrees. So how big did we make our drumstick? And that doesn't need to be that many seconds. Definitely not like that. So there's no point of that. So here we get the age-old problem that our margin of our drumstick is way too small. Oh, I didn't make it. I didn't want to actually make it. I wanted to make it a capture shape. Uh, radius zero one. Uh, no, not zero one. Okay. Uh, I'm just making the capsule shape because the capsule shape is slightly. Um, better, um, as in hitting them. However, our radius is much smaller than our margin. And I'm not sure if that matters, but I know that can, that can give problems. Stop making noise. So that might end up being a problem. All right. Now, the other thing that we need to do here is... Um, no, we actually don't care because we're going to go and completely control that. That said, I actually want this on physics process. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to move our character body to where our hand is. Now, you hear you saying, but that's, it's a child of the hand, so it's going to follow. Well, that's actually going to be changed right now. And I'm not going to do it here because uh, then it will be uh, merely visible. And I don't want that because it's annoying. But we're going to go to our character body and we're going to call uh, set is top layer. Or is it is top? I always forget what this bloody thing is called. Uh, top level. Top level. So we're going to set that to true. Cool. So what we're now going to do is we're going to see how much space or how much distance there is between our anchor points and our character body. Um, we are going to go and immediately um, copy over our, where are we going to do that? No, I think we're only going to do that if we don't hit something. So, we want to have um, drum, I don't want to do that. Not really. Shut up. Uh, drum stick body drum stick. Oh, that needs to now be renamed here. Drum stick body. There we go. I'm going to leave that there. So this is going to be drum stick transform. Is um, anchor dot global transform. So that is our uh, current transform. Now we're going to go and say target transform transform. Okay. Um, I also want to do before we continue. That was visible. <clears throat> We're going to track whether that just changed. Okay. This is going to be anchor. So we're going to check two things here. 
if was visible was false. Or target transform dot origin. <clears throat> So if the distance between that, and we're going to again do an exit bar for that, max, max, distance. Let's make that half a meter for now. I'm not sure if that's going to be too little or too much. But if we have moved our stick too much, we just want to teleport our player body there and if we teleport it inside of a body then we teleport it inside of a body there's little, very little that we can do about that so in this case we're just going to say jump stick transform um is target transform okay all right um by the way, I just want to do this. I don't even want to right there. Cool. Or we could just do, hold on. Um, yeah, why not? Not what I wanted. Okay. So. Um, Wondering if we can just, I don't think I need that one. I don't want to overdo that. I'm just going to go and say global position. I don't think I need more than that. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So what I now want to do is the over orientation and this is where i wasn't sure whether i want the origin point to be the way that it is um actually one of the things that i also want to do is create one ready var from thick and let's call it create an unready bar or uh, anchor this makes it easier to read go let's think I hope that that gets done before that but we'll find that out quickly enough yeah Go, which means that we can do global is target transform dark faces. We're just assigning our orientation there. But now to move our drumstick to where our hand is, we're going to do a move and slide. Right? Actually, we're going to do a move and slide. However, we're going to have to go and do some trickery now. Why is that because I put this on the wrong thing? Oh boy, that is not very smart, is it? Um, no, that is on the right thing. That needs to be a drumstick. You need to do a different color. Okay, that. Okay, hey, that one actually has motion in order to be okay, it should be computed using delta. Well, in our case, not because we're actually wanting to move it to that point. Which is perfect. Um, we probably want to go and do, let's max collision. This allows you to do more than one collision. So we're just going to care about cover as collision is true. Any penetration from the recovery phase. Okay, we don't care about that. So we just care about the motion, which means that we should be 
Oh, we can actually keep that for our motion. Number three is this. And that means that we can just do that. So now we have a motion and we can just apply that as a move and glide. Perfect. Cool. Sweet. Okay. So what we now want to see is if we actually hit something, what have we hit? So in move and collide, no, in here, character is body, blah, blah, blah. How do I get the actual collisions that we just did? Move and collide. Oh, it returns it. Okay, for collisions, is that? There we go. So, if, actually, no, it's a single collision that we get back. Okay, cool. That's actually cool. They, this has actually become a class now. Collision, oh. okay. That indeed correct. That's a rep counted. So I'm assuming that if we are not colliding, we're just going to get an empty reference back. So if is valid, then we're hitting something. All right, cool. Now the thing of course is that when we hit our drum, our hand is probably gonna go through the drum and for a number of frames, we're gonna try and go through that drum's um, collision um, shape. Which is actually also interesting because we only really want the drum to be hit from the top. We can actually hit it, uh, hit it from the side, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm actually thinking about doing something about that later. For now, we're just going to leave that on the top. So we have now that we can collide with something and we are going to know what that is because we have all this beautiful collider information. Okay. And obviously things that we wanna do eventually, because we're hitting it with the whole stick I don't really care about that too much right now. Okay. So with get collider, If it is detected, we get that back. We've set maximum collisions to one, so we're just going to get one collision. Because uh, we can eventually look at things like, for instance, how hard are we hitting it? Where are we hitting it? And depending on that, change things. But for now, we're just going to simply say, if we hit it, boom, we're hitting it. So obviously, we need to go get our collider now. Or, um, actually want um, hit effect. No 3D, it should always be a no 3D. There we go, boom. Um, that means that I should be able to do collision gets. Collider, let's get collider, yep. Zero, because we want to get, oh, we don't even need to specify zero. If we don't specify anything, we get the first one. Okay. 
Um, so here we're gonna go look for the last hit objects. Means that here we can now say the last hit object is okie dokie. Cool. Okay. Now, here there is something that I'm not 100% sure about. Because remember there is a problem if you are comparing two objects when the objects can be nil. Well, Okay, if they're both not valid, um, well, actually, let's start with this first. Okay, so if our current Hit object is not valid, then uh, class. Let's put the new image. Okay, so we hit something, oops, something new here. Cool. Okay. Um, for now, I think, no. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this guy a class name. Um, go, go, drums. I called this project Go, Go, Drums. Don't ask me why. Actually, let's call that GG. That's right. There we go. Let's see how that works. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. If its object is I find GG instrument in current scope. Why not? I just created one. I hope this isn't one of those. You have to. Um, you have to reload your project before I'm going to start working thing. Well, let's try that. Reload current project. Save and reload. Okay, that is not reloading, that is so annoying. It happened to be last time as well, it's really weird. Okay, now it's heavy, so yeah, fun, except for these stupid errors that are still coming up. 
So yeah, again, I have got no idea why uh, why I need to restart before it figures that out. That could be because of those errors that something is not completing, but this way it's figured out that that is the case. Cool. All right. So now that we know that it's the correct type of object, we can say strike. For that, we're going to go and create a function here. So when our drumstick hits this, we are going to call its strike function. I think it has, doesn't have a name. And this is where we're going to have the actual logic that we we want inside of um, the main script. And we're just going to do setup in the actual instrument itself. So for that, we're going to start with the fact that we need a sample to play. So um, one thing that I want to do here is add in an audio, audio stream player 3D we are going to make the sound positional and we're going to go and put in an audio stream there cool now one of the problems that we have oh hey Glenn Soft, how are you going i'm doing well thanks um yeah one of the problems that we're having is if we quickly repeatedly hit our instrument we um we will end up replaying the sound and missing part of the sound that's something that i'm going to solve later i'm not going to solve that yet oh look at that Ooh. I didn't know that there was actually a function for that. So uh, I don't even have to worry about that. I can just put that to a maximum number. That's probably a little bit much, but that's what we're going to do. So if we repeatedly hit it, we keep hitting play by play, it's going to go and uh, do more at the same time. Now I'm gonna be very interested if uh, when I do this, um, whether the sound is actually gonna to go to stream correctly, because I should have set that up correctly, but I don't know yet. Uh, but the thing that we're going to start with is we're actually going to go and export um, our um, our sound um, sound <laughs> audio stream. Um, actually, we're going to call it strike sound. Why not strike sound audio stream? Um, and in this case, we want to go and put a setter there because obviously. We're going to remember that, but we're also going to set that on our, actually I want to rename that thing, right, player. If inside, actually I'm going to do that. So yeah, if inside, if inside tree, that means that we're loaded. Then we're going to do update strike. And we're doing this because our property can be set before we're inside our tree, which means that we can't actually set it yet. So in this case, oh, update strike sound. Now we can do, do no, that's the wrong one. Yep. And we're going to go and say stream is strike go um and that means that we also need to go and call that on our ready so if this is set on our property that gets called first when we're not yet inside tree but then on ready we are and we can finally assign our sound cool and then on our strike for now we're not going to worry about anything um they're just going to say strike player so that's going to go and play that sound. We're not going to worry yet about, um, I don't know, reasons why we can't yet play it. For now, we're just going to go and do that. So on our tom drum, 
we can now go and set up our strike sound. And we're going to go into our um, assets. And I already downloaded a bunch of assets from Freesound. This is our ton. Of course, I can't see the names. And we'll just do our high tom as a sound. No idea whether that's any good. We shall see. So in theory, if we've done everything right, not convinced about, but we'll see. Um, if we hit this, our sound will play and probably blow off my ear. Um, so again, everybody, let me know if the sound even works. Um, and whether it's too loud or not. But I'm going to go and try it out here. Okay. Yep. Well, our automatic sound, this is, I still don't get what this sound is. Um, our automatic uh, sound thing is not yet. Oh, there is a break. Okay. Is valid on a no instance. Okay. That actually can just be it. And I think we can do that as well, because indeed. All right. Let's see if that will work. Okay. Where's our drum? Why am I not seeing my drum? Oh my drum drum. I use my stick, but I don't see a drum. What happened to my drum? Pain. Maybe. Did I put that? Okay, that didn't save. How good is that? I have no idea whether that's a, this is positioned in a good space, but we'll see that quickly enough. Uh, but I do not know why we lost that. Okay, well, it is in front of me. It must have been something. Okay, that's too far. That said, I can hit it. Tracking just screws up because it's so far away, and I am running out of my tracking space. So let's put that a bit closer. And let's go and move away a bit more. Okay, and it's too high, but... What if I get my other one? <laughs> Why do I get my... Oh. Yep, that definitely works. Cool. That's interesting. Because that should hit. And this is the thing that I definitely need to solve. Okay, it also wants to, well, that's, I think, just my tracking that is really bad at the moment. This, this left, this, uh, this controller has had tracking issues for a long time. Yeah, because that one does, well, that's, I think, my half a meter change, but that's okay. But sometimes, depending on the angle that I'm at, Obviously, we don't want that to happen, but uh, hey, for uh, for just a very um, for a very quick test, that's pretty good. Now, okay, um, I did have that. It was too high and too close to me. Well, it's, yeah, it's part of physics as well, but also the way that I right now implemented this, so. But hey, I'm uh, I'm happy that in principle it works. So obviously, um, I need to figure out a little bit more about getting a tracking right. Something that I'm thinking about is to get an extra collision shape around this. Um, to sort of make sure that we we can only hit the top, but actually that's that's something that we can we can do right away is just create a second static body here. Um, we call that outer body, and that can now have a collision shape. 
Okay. And that one is also going to be a capsule shape. No, oh, not a capsule. A, uh, a cylinder shape. There we go. Thank you. Um, which is also going to be 25, so that it nicely fits around. Might even be a little bit more, so that it's slightly around there. That is now going to be the height of our drum. So it's 0.3. And we are going to move that down. So now that's slightly below the edge. So now the top is our actual detection one. And we have, and actually maybe I'll make this slightly smaller. So that also the underside is good. I'm just gonna, so we do have a little bit of an edge here that we could potentially hit, which I'm fine with this, oops. But we're now going to make sure that we can actually get the stick into the drum and we can really only hit it from the top. Yeah, I need, that's something that, uh, that we need to have a look at as well. Um, on Linux, it's a bit of a, a mixed answer. Um, Steam VR runs on Linux, but as far as I'm aware, that only works with the original Vive and with the Index. And I'm not 100% if they sure if they still support the original Vive. Um, but I think they do. For me. Um, but if you use the Monado OpenXR runtime, you have quite a lot more headsets that you could uh, you could use. But I think the HT Vive would work with um, Steam VR on the Linux. But I don't have any personal experience with that, so I'm not 100% sure. All right, I just want to test and see if this works. All right. There we go. Go. Okay. So this is my problem. I'm now too close to my desk. Let's go and get both of these. So, so now I cannot hit it from the side. Yeah, I'll, next is actually the velocity that will be around. Good. Yeah, fun, 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 fun. All right. So. Oh, come on. And the big problem with velocity is what is a good velocity to. Um, make the sound work on. Okay. So that means in this script, we already have our motion. So now we can actually calculate our velocity here by saying velocity is, um, and we're going to go by the original motion for this, or are we going to get the velocity from our pose? I think we're going to go and see if our, our velocity on a pose works. Because that should work. Okay. Um, no, that's on. It's a node. Get pose. Or are we going to go and do it from where we... No, I want the velocity on our pose. Okay, so that gives our next our pose. And we should be getting that because we just moved our controller based on this. We have our linear velocity here as a vector. We actually want that as a length. And that's going to be in meters per second. And I always make that same spelling mistake. And we're now going to go and give our velocity to our strike so that we know how hard we struck it. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go and say P velocity. 
Alright, so we're going to go up strike, velocity, float. And that's that now we need to figure out you now how much. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. How do we go how are we going to determine the volume of that? Um a good one I think we're going to have to have some uh, uh, Rodzilla the velocity gets the velocity of the um, of the movement of the controller itself so that will be the the pose that we get which is in this case is our arm pose which will be you know wherever our hand is we're not getting the velocity of the of the, the tip we're getting the velocity of our whole hand movement um which we probably want to change because now that i think of it if you are flicking you know your hand doesn't really move but of course the tip of the um um the tip does move but we need to then do that based on where the tip was going to go and I think that actually is something that we want to want to add in right away. So let's go and see. Um, so we got our drumstick buddy. Yep, there we go. So here we want to go and add a helper node. And we're going to call that tip. And we're going to go and move that to the tip of our drum. Um, hmm. We really should be doing that. <laughs> uh. If we want to be really precise, we want to do that based on the velocity of the point that's actually hitting the drum, even if I'm hitting it flat or whatever. For now, we're going to assume that we're always hitting with the tip. Or are we? Where are we? Okay. We're going to need that then. Okay. So our transform is that. So now we can actually go. Let's say. Just so that we don't have any overhead in grabbing things. So here we're just going to move, move, blah, 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 move, move. Okay. And go and do that. Okay. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so we're gonna start with our hit position. Collision, get. Maybe we can actually get the collision velocity. And then we already have it. We should use this probably. 
Yeah, so finding all the velocity given in collision EF. That just gives us the velocity of the body itself. And again, that will be the center of the body. That's not what we want. Okay. So we want to get the get the collision position. Returns the point of collision in global coordinates given the collision index. So D plus collision by D squared. Okay. Well, let's see what that does um, and have some fun with it. Uh, for that, I am going to go and add a new test object here. This is going to go and be a sphere. It's going to become a fairly tiny sphere. Yeah, let's see what that is. Maybe tinier than that. Nope. That's about the size of the stick. Perfect. Um, let's go give that a different color so that it stands out. There we go. And in this case, um, in this case, I'm going to uh, enable top level just on here, so we can now already see. Oh no, so that that is still the center of this scene. That's okay, doesn't really matter. Um, so what I want to do right now, I want to see where that ends up being. Um, all right, so now I want to get that hit position in local space of our drumstick. So bar hits local based on our new drumstick position. Um, which actually means that we need to re-get that because that has now moved. So this is going to be drumstick.global transform dot um, I need to cancel that to see if that is why. No, of course not. What is it? Change. Oh, that's not those are not operators, are they? We don't have uh, okay. So we can do operator with vector. Which means that I am going to do the inverse first, which is a bit Okay, I always inverse transform with something at the base is such a weird thing. Um, I think in this case we can just do inverse. Okay. Inverse. Points position. So now we get our hit position in local space. Cool. Then it's hit start. We're going to go the other way around. We're now going to go to our original transform position. So the idea is that I want to I want to calculate where it starts and where it ends. Can I make the microphone louder? I can maybe move it closer because I don't think there's actually a volume button on the microphone. I might be able to go and no, it's it's mixing it into uh, to 
the max here. Or is it just that I'm mumbling too much? That's also possible because I do do that when I start um, talking. So no, on the stream it's set to loudest. So um, so yeah, I hope that that that's not just me mumbling a little bit too much. Okay. So what we're doing with this is when our stick. I should have had something that I could use as a prop for a stick. I don't have a prop for a stick. That sucks. Um, but I'm basically looking at where I'm hitting and what my stick's transform is there. And I'm getting the point on that stick. And by doing an inverse transform, I'm now getting, if you look at our, our stick. So let's say that in global space, I have it over here. Then when I do that inverse, I'm now knowing, I'm not getting the position on my stick that shows where where it was that I hit. Now I wanna know where that position was before I swung down. And I wanna know where that position will, would have been if I hadn't stopped. Because that gives me how fast I was moving. So we also need to do a var hit end. And in this case, we're going to use our target transform. Hit position. There we go. And that now means that our velocity is going to be our hit end. Take away our hit start. That's the total movement. We want the length of that. And we're going to divide that by delta to get meters per second. All right, cool. So we have our first test here. That is our little ball. But I want to do a second thing. And that is that I want to um, I want to add a label here. Um, I'm just going to say test. I'm going to go and have that float over here. It doesn't really matter where it is uh, because it's just for debugging right now. Okay. Um, let's label. And all that I'm going to do here, we're going to print what that... Um, what that velocity ended up being. So, okay. No idea if that's gonna work, but let's find out. I'm gonna have to move back again. While well, not be able to hit it. There we go. Of course, my controllers are off again. Okay, so test. And of course, I hit a break button. <laughs> what, what did I do wrong? I forgot an E. Um, debug. Hmm. It work. Okay, we can see where it, where it hit, but our... Okay, I should have moved that slightly. Do that real quick. Okay. Um, boom. Let's go and do that like this. And I actually want the text not to be centered, but I want that to be left so that we can just do it like that. And now we hopefully can read it. Yeah, I know. We're in the wrong spot for that. Okay. That's very well. Okay. 
how are we going to I think we're gonna do that with a curve. Ah we are going to apply a curve. So with hitting it quite hard. Okay. So, when I tapped it very softly, <clears throat> I was getting values like 0 0.5 to 1. And when I hit it hard, I got all the way up to 20, or 32 in the end, even. Oh, my throat. <coughs> mm. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Whoa. Okay, so now the, first of all, the idea of that was that it is whatever part of the stick I hit the drum with, I'm calculating the speed of that thing. So hitting it with the tip of the stick now gives me the speed of the tip of the stick. But if I would, you know, hit it even at the bottom of the stick, <coughs> I would get the speed of that point on the stick. So that's what that bit of code does. Um, you know, starting with what's the local position in relation to our drumstick that I hit it, and then do check where those positions were at our starting position and where we wanted the stick to be. And that gives us a nice uh, speed. It also means that if we um, move very softly, we could even ignore the sound altogether. All right. Now, One problem that we have with sound, obviously, is sound works in decibels. And every six decibels, a sound doubles in um, <clears throat> in vo volume. And, you know, every six decibels we go lower, we have the sound. So we need to translate our, our speed into, you know, making it louder or softer. But I want that to be a curve. So let's see what we can do there. Um, so that's going to be on instrument. And we're going to make that export var stripe volume curve. Um, I guess that would just be a curve like that. So if I go here. I can now create a new curve. And then we have our input and we have our output. So our input is going to be from zero um, speed to max speed. But it's always an, an input from zero to one. So we need to have another export variable. Max but velocity velocity Don't. and let's for argument's sake say that that is 20 because again like i said when i hit it really hard i went all the way up to 32 we just need a point where we stop it okay <coughs> so In this case, we're going to make a stripe factor is clamp strike velocity divided by max. Actually, let's call it max strike velocity. And we clamp it between those. So it's going to be max strike velocity. Cool. So that's going to be our input. So this is when we hardly move our stick, and this is at our max velocity. And now we want to create a um, a sound curve there. So let's say that we're going to go from 
minus 24 decibels to plus 24 decibels. I don't know if that's the maximum that we can do. Hold on. Let's go and have a look at that first. What is our max and min volume dB? So we can go oh, all the way down to 80, and we can go all the way up to 80. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go all the way up to 80. That's going to be very painful and loud, I think. So, yes, let's be conservative and have our tom drum go. Let's just do it because that's already four times as loud. Is that or is that double double? So that's four eight times as loud, I think. Okay, so obviously, we want to have a center point somewhere here. Go and do this guy over here, but we want to actually go with something like that. This guy over here. Something. That's a good question. Do we want to have this maybe a bit more like this? I honestly don't know what's smart here. Let's just, oops, that was enough. I thought I wouldn't mind. Let's just see what that does. Let's just see what it does with the... Oh, um, I haven't assigned it. I haven't put any code there. Okay. So, with that strike factor, we can now, on our curve... Um, we can do a sample bake. Okay, cool. So, volume, no. our volume is strike a volume curve, uh, get curve, curve bait. What was it? Come on. Sample bait. Sample bait. Strike. Player 3D dot volume is volume. So let's see if that works. Yeah, I think something like that, Godzilla, but uh, with the curve, you can play nicer, but I, I'll settle with it just at least doing something by default. My cables always mess up. Um, I'm just going to do one controller for now. Move out a bit so that my... Okay, I don't think the volume does anything right now. Oh. It did do something. Hmm. I think that uh, our... I think we need to be able to get much louder. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go and do that minus 80 and 80 as the maximum amount. I'm also going to go and, this is way too high, so I'm gonna move that like over here, get that one to really drop off. Maybe. Something like this. No idea. I hope I'm not going to make anybody wet. <laughs> it gets loud too far, so I think I went the wrong way with this midpoint. That is really interesting that it does that. No, that's wrong. Hmm. I 
I honestly have no idea what this should look like. But hey, it's at least something. Okay, that's too little. No, I really have to get my heart to, <laughs> to get some. <laughs> okay. Um, actually make this a bit more. There we go. And now I actually want this to be much more. Okay. Let's see what that does. Hit my desk there. Okay. Um, I think it's not getting loud quick enough. I don't want it to be that far down, I think. I wish I could make this smaller. Okay. Let's try something like this. Uh, Oh, they're hit, hitting the sticks together. That's actually a good idea to make that the sound as well. Okay, this is strange because that should hit something. Hold on. I need to sit my oh, that. Why is this not only working? Why is it not working when I do that? Okay, I'm gonna go and put um, collision shapes on. Uh, collision shapes. Right, hopefully we can see. Yeah. So why are you not hitting? Oh, that makes no sense. Is that because it's hitting the other collision shape first? Hmm. I'm just going to go and disable that collision shape for a second, see if that is the cause. It's not. That makes no sense. It's like my collision shape is only on the tip of my. Anyway, in principle, it's working. So, hmm. But, yeah. I am not sure why that is not working correctly. No, the stick is. Uh, oh, yeah, that could be the problem. Um, <coughs> it could be because of this. Stupid margin. Which actually needs to be much smaller. And there is also a setting in here that affects that. So where is my physics settings? Physics, physics, physics. Oh, yeah. And that's the max allow penetration. We're going to go and move that smaller as well. 
Let's see if that makes a difference. Looks like it. I don't know. I got no idea. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. But the tip of my uh, my drumstick worked. So I think that's good enough for me. But I have no idea why it's only working on the tip, even though my collision shape is over the whole length. Yeah, well, um, I kind of, you know, for now it's good enough. <laughs> that's definitely something that's worth further investigation. But for now, I am happy enough about that. I'm gonna turn that back on because that obviously had didn't have anything to do with it. Um. But yeah, I have no idea why why I can't hit the drum with any part of the stick. That does not make a whole lot of sense to me. Hmm. Okay. Um, I do want to go and get my test label out of here. I also don't need that anymore. We now don't know that works. Um, I'm actually going to go and comment this out, not remove it, oops, because I might want to use that later on. I'm thinking about at some point having a um, a debug menu somewhere. I don't need that anymore. Cool. So one thing that we can obviously do is also check if we hit the other stick, but I don't have a sound for that yet. Yeah, yeah, scaling is always a problem, but I'm not scaling anything, so at least I shouldn't be scaling anything. There isn't a scale on that guy. There isn't a scale on that guy. And there isn't a scale on that guy. So <clears throat> that should be all right. So yeah, I don't know why... Uh, Why that is a problem. All right. Now, the other thing that we could do, for that we do need to put a uh, script on this guy, is check if we if we uh, hit the sticks together. But I I'd, I'd need the sound for that, so I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, so I think for now, let's just see if we can at least complete our, our drum set a bit. So I'm going to go and move him over here. I call you Tom Drum 1. I'm also going to put a Tom Drum 2. I'm also deleting some in there. Um, because that's now our two Tom Drums. We don't have a way yet to kick, kick our bass drum, so I'm going to leave that out. But I'm going to do the floor Tom next. So for that, let's go and just duplicate that. Call that floor tom drum. There we go. Cool. Um, that means that we can now go and put our floor tom drum. Um, where is our? Where did it go? Over there. Cool. Um, so that goes to our right here. A bit more up. A bit more. Okay. Um, that one. What's that? There we go. Cool. So 
So this one we need to distinguish a little bit because this one's going to be a bit larger. No, it's okay. Um, again, that's just to stop us hitting the drum from the outside. Side. And in this case, we have a different sound for that. And that's our floor tom. Cool. So there's a floor drum tom. There is a normal tom drum. There's a normal tom drum. Cool. What else do we want to have? We want to have a snare drum. Okay. Okay. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, I just created that one. Okay. Um, snare drum. So let's go get rid of that duplicate drum. Okay, call you snare drum. So this one is actually going to be smaller. Let's make that two. Um, Hmm. Weird. Hold on. I don't know. Um, yep. And then this guy needs to be much smaller. Doesn't have to be precise, it's just something to have something visible. Um, so here, of course, we want now a snare. Uh, what's the sound? Snare drum. Most of the drums are snare drum. Okay, on this side. Good enough for now. Okay. All right. Now the, these are kind of different than what we're doing. But now we can we can do something funny with that. Pinball. That's where we're going to go and remove that. Um, so that's going to be trash. Symbol. 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 Um, 
I'm going to make that really small. But eventually, this is something that actually needs a nicer shape. Um, and you need to go. Here we're probably going to get into trouble with our margins again. And here we're probably going to be able to go through it, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter for our start. Start, we're just going to say we need to be able to hit this. Okay. Um, that obviously needs to have a different sound as well. Crash symbol. Okay. Oh, crash symbol's in the right way. Cool. Okay. Just going to put that over there for now. Um, yeah. And it's just to have something that remotely looks like what we want to do. Eventually, we need to have some nice models for that. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. Again, I apologize. I have no idea how to play the drums. So um, I'm just gonna randomly hit stuff <laughs> and see if it works. Okie dokie. <clears throat> oh, yes, we still have our. Oh, why is that floating around in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. One, two, okay. What is because I don't disable the uh, the collision shapes? So this is getting out of uh, tracking space. That doesn't sound very nice. Because this is one when we look at these, actually when we strike it, that should actually move. But in principle, everything works. Pretty cool. Right. So, getting late, guys. So, uh, I'm just going to do some rounding off stuff. One of which is I'm going to go and deal with some shadow issues because that looks horrible. Okay. Good. Um, first things first, let's turn off our collision shapes. Um, let's also in our hands, let me make it visible. So the other thing that I want to do is um, the shape that's disabled is not visible. Let's turn that the other way around so that we don't accidentally get that. Okay. Um, let's go and have a look here. Um, 
Ah, oh, this is that only works in the <laughs> um that only works in the Vulcan renderer. Okay, that sucks. Um let's go and play around with this a little bit more. Much better. No, it's the other way around. Okay, I screwed it up. It made it worse. Um, this is where it does help if I can actually see about the directional shadow atlas. Um, go away with your menu. There we go. That's not very helpful at all. Okay. There's just not enough stuff in here to actually make that do much. So. That actually doesn't make sense. Um, that should definitely be much lower anyway. Definitely make more sense than that. Uh, wait. I want to get all the drums kind of in there. Put this one in. Because we're in a small environment anyway, so. <coughs> Could do blend splits, but I think that's overdone. Hmm. Kind of works good enough. That's right. Obviously, there isn't much to uh, to cast a shadow on us because we don't have much stuff in here. Um, don't need you anymore. We just have our drums right now. Obviously, we need to have a nicer background. But for now, that works good enough. Um, we do obviously want to get the big floor drum in there at the moment, or and want to the kick drum and dress things up with uh, with stands and stuff like that. But we'll do that once we actually have some nice models to put in here. That's it as a start. I think this is a good start. Wondering if Make everything a little bit lower. Okay. Looks like that one's now all the way to the floor. So definitely don't want that one on the floor. Okay, there we go. I really do want them up a bit more. Obviously, having something that we can position these in game, that would be really cool. But um, that's that's a big one for another day, I think. Okay, so let's actually go like that. Be more like that. Like that. Be more like that, just so that we. Don't have those in a weird position yet. Put them down. We actually put them as even lower. Now, obviously, tracking takes over for this, but 
just to have it in a bit of a better position when we're just looking. That's good enough for what it is that we're doing right now. All right, guys. I think that's where I'm going to leave it tonight because it's uh, it's nearly midnight here, and I do want to get to bed in a uh, reasonable hour. However, um, as a start, we're somewhere. We've got um, our instruments. We can hit them. They start playing a, a sound. There's a few things that we need to fix up, but it's it's all working pretty decently. <clears throat> so I think the next thing that I need to look at is how I'm going to do something that indicates to the player that what drums they need to hit. Um, so basically it's tracks that float towards the player. Um, and with that, seeing if I can... Um, score well, by figuring out if the player is hitting the drum at the right time or too late or too early. But I think that's for uh, for the next video to uh, to work on. But as a proof of concept, this is a nice start, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, wild, weird experiment of mine. Um, obviously, this is there's a lot of stuff that needs to be improved here. This is just really early concept work. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. This is um, I want to continue with this a little longer to at least have the basics working. I'll figure out um, actually playing a song in the background and then having. Um, you know, the tracks reflect the, um, um, you know, the notes of the song so that you're actually hitting everything accordingly. Um, I've probably got a lot more to figure out about, you know, the volume things and uh, making sure that it feels natural how hard or soft you hit so things and the volume there. You know, right now, the, uh, the whole curve thing that we did... Um, yeah, it's a nice little trick, but whether that is the correct way of doing it, I don't know. Whether we should just calculate it, I don't know. Or whether I should just play around with it, you know, find some way to actually make this uh, changeable in, in game so that we can play around with it and see what, what sort of curves work. Um, yeah, there's, there's some experimentation that we can do there. Uh, obviously, all the drums eventually need to be replaced by actual models so that they look nice. For now, it was just um, the important bin, uh, bit was just to get a little bit of visual difference in in which drums there are. Oh, we should do something with colors. That might actually be a, a quick one that I kind of like to do. So if we go here. Um, material. No, not shader material, standard material. Although I do, that, that's the other thing that for VR, I'm getting more and more convinced of that it is better to uh, sorry. Um, it's better to actually create um, shader materials and set them up as simple as possible. So here I'm really creating a shader that does so much extra that it really doesn't need to do that it actually... Uh... Oh, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> um, that it actually becomes wasteful. And especially in VR, that obviously is an important thing to have that we... Uh... that we make sure that our materials don't waste cycles just because we're creating a more complex shader than we need to. Like for instance, even something simple as this, where I'm setting the color, 
all the code to actually assign a texture to it is in there. But if I'm not using a texture, then the texture read reading from nothing still, you know, has a performance impact, especially on something like a quest. So that's one of the things that really needs to be done here as well. But I think for now, just as a start, just to get something uh, up and running, I think this was a this was a good little experiment to do. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this project itself. Uh, that depends a bit on how far I get with it. I might put this on GitHub. Um, I might not. I'm, I'm, I haven't really decided on that yet. Um, or I might just, you know, uh, when it's a little bit further along, put it on itch and let people play around with it and just have some fun with it. So this is, uh, yeah, it, it still is a nice little start, I think. So that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I hope it was informative. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all for joining and thank you for watching. And uh, um, oh yeah, I'm I'm going to try and do this every Friday. Uh, I'm I'm going to try and get back to my Friday schedule as before and just uh, just do a short stream like tonight. Just start around nine and go through to midnight. And uh, I don't know, I might work on this a little bit more or pick up one of my old projects or maybe do something completely different. I don't know. Um, we will see where we end up with it. But that's the plan. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.